write stuff down and then just say, hey, I'll just go back and look. Um, so the first thing, this is what we did yesterday. We looked at one of the uses of synthetic division is to divide polynomials. Now, what was the stipulation? In order for me to use synthetic division, something had to be specific related to the device. It had to be a linear binomial, which means the power of 1 to mx plus b1, right? Something like that. And uh, that's what I can use synthetic division. And so here's an example, 5x to the 4th minus 6 cubed plus 0x squared. So that's why there is a 0 here, because there is no x squared term. Plus 2x minus 4. And then we did our drop, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply, add, multiply add, right? That's what we ended up with. And we came up with some answer that had a remainder in it sometimes. And sometimes we, we have no remainder. Um, so that was yesterday. And we also look at, this is called the division algorithm. And what it basically says is, if I have some polynomial Px, and that polynomial Px is going to be equivalent to a divisor times a quotient plus a remainder. And that's actually, when we do long division, that's what we're doing. When we have some number go into another number, um, well, let's just look at some. Let's say we had uh, 12 going into 40, for example. We would know that that goes in at least three times with a remainder of four. And so in this setup, this x minus q thing, or x minus c thing, would be our divisor of 12. And if I took that divisor of 12, and I multiplied it by the quotient, which in this problem is 3, I get what? 12 times 3? I get 36. So I have a 12, that's what you need, 3. This would, have been, this would have been my quotient. 12 would have been my divisor. Quotient would have been 3 in this example. And look what happens when we add the 4. What do we get? So this is just called the division algorithm. This is what we're doing when we're doing division. Whenever the divisor multiplies by the quotient, those two plus the sum of the remainder will always equal your polynomial. And so we looked at a couple other ways of writing our answers, and that's where this came from. So if my polynomial is divided by x plus 2, I get that with a remainder of 96. And uh, we looked at it a little differently yesterday. We looked at it like this. I said divided by x plus 2, and then that would equal 5x to the third minus 13x squared plus 26x minus 50. And then we have this remainder of six, the 96 thing. Um, and I wrote it like this. And we had this thing divided by the divisor as well. And if I know, if I multiply, oh, plus, plus, and if we multiply everything by x plus two, whoops, <coughs> wrong one. I'm not supposed to be dividing there. I'm supposed to be dividing on the 96. There we go. Uh, and if we multiply everything by x plus two, I would end up with this guy. So that's what we did yesterday. Here's another way I could write these polynomials division by showing plus remainder over divisor. All right. So then we get into, we talked about, we didn't do anything with, the other ways that synthetic division is useful. One of the ways we said is it, it helps me find coordinates of uh, points on my graph. We said if the remainder happened to be zero, then we can find the factors of my polynomial. And if I can find the factors of my polynomial, it's nice to be able to graph it that way versus expanded form. It's hard to graph in expanded form. And so that's what we're going to look at today is the remaining uses of synthetic division. So here's the first one, to evaluate. We said I take a number f of something, plug that value in for x, get an answer, and that would be my f of 3 equals, in this case, what? 46, right? So you'll notice that then in synthetic division, 
when you have function notation, f of 3 equal, and you put a 3 in here, and you put a 3 in here, and you put a 3 in here, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a 46. Well, that's what synthetic division shows. There's my 3, there's my 46. So we talked about that yesterday. This was known as the remainder theorem. Whatever I get as a remainder is the y value of the divisor number, which is our x. And those two can create a coordinate. That's use number two. If that remainder happens to be zero, which is great, so along with the remainder theorem, this one, this one kind of goes along with, with this. If our remainder is a zero, then what I found, besides the fact that in this case f of 3 is equal to zero, more importantly what you have found is that x minus 3 is a factor. So I like to see zeros with synthetic division because then I know that this number up here is my C value. So when I write factored form, which is this guy right here, here's the factored value. Um, I know that I have broken this thing down from a cubic function now to a quadratic, and I can maybe factor this for a quadratic formula to find the other two factors of this. So this was, uh, this was a good one. When I have a zero as a remainder, I like to see that. That's the uh, what's called the factor theorem, actually. So that's use number three. Use number four, um, going right along with this, where I just kind of talked about it. Once I know that I found these remainder of zero, I have found the factor x minus three. And that's good because it helps me graph. And then use number five. The whole point thing. He said that I can use some that at the t-table, or in, in place of the t-table. I don't have to do, here's x, here's y. I can just set up the t-table. Look, it looks a little different, right? Synthetic division, I don't have the little space to put my numbers that I'm adding to the ones and the negative twos and the ones and the negative twos. I would say get used to setting it up this way. It's just faster. You really don't need synthetic division with this. You don't need, to, unless it helps you, of course it helps you do it. But I don't really need to find these values to get the answers that are there. I can just do that stuff in my head. And so that's what this form right here allows me to do. So uh, let's see if we can, let's try it together to see if it makes sense. So I would, instead of the synthetic division world, this would normally, this one would drop. And then what would I do with the 1 and this negative 3? I multiply. And I get a negative 3. And that negative 3 would do what with this top negative 2? It would add. And so what number should be right there? A negative 5 should be there. Right? So there's a negative 5 there. And then a negative 5 times a negative 3 is a, and a it's a good thing you're here. And a 15 plus a 1 is a, so that should be a 16 right there. And then a 16 and a negative 3 is a negative 48. A negative 48 minus 12 is a negative 60. So there should be a negative 60 right here, which means that an f of negative 3 should be equal to negative 60. So there it is. 1 drops, multiply, adds, multiply, adds, multiply, adds. There's my remainder, which is a coordinate of negative 360. Right, so there it is, synthetic division in all of its glory. It, it is life changing. Yeah. All right, yes, what's going to be the next value? Well, I don't know, I'll don't. i let you guys work on it. See if you can figure out the values here, and you can tag team. One of you can do this one, one of you can do negative one, one of you can do zero. But let's see if we can get all these right. What are the remaining points here of negative two, negative one, zero, one, two, three? And then we're going to use those and graph this to get the shape. And then we'll talk about in behavior. And then we will have all of the tools needed to be able to graph polynomials and the world will be a better place. Okay. So, all right. Here we go.
So there are my coordinates, and then now we plot them. They, oh, man. What a bummer. Okay, it's okay. We can work it. We have the technology. So I need to be small is negative 60, and big is... Okay, so this all needs to become... Let's go by steps of uh, 10, shall we? Maybe 5. We'll go by steps of 5. approaches negative infinity, that means y 
is getting smaller, smaller, smaller. That will happen when x is approaching negative infinity. So as x keeps getting smaller this way, <coughs> And then on the other side is x getting big. x keeps getting bigger. Look what y is doing. It is also getting bigger. So y infinitely grows, x infinitely grows. Now this only will happen, it's called in behavior for a reason. It only happens once I have passed my outer limits of my x-intercepts or my zeros. Once I know what those extreme boundaries are, I guess they're not extreme. Once I know what those boundaries are, then I know my graph just keeps going in whatever direction. And so that's where this stuff kicks in, telling you the end of the graph. So look at odd functions with positive leaf coefficients. That's something like this. 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus blah, 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 blah. Odd, positive. The next one, odd, negative. So that would be negative. 3x cubed plus 2x squared plus blah, 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 blah. So all you see that happens is when it's a negative, my graph just splits. And we already know that from quadratics. We know if a quadratic has a negative in front, it opens down instead of up. Y's and ups and downs just swap location. And then with the evens, it's uh, they do the same thing. So even guys. 4x to the 4th plus da 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 da. With a lead positive, they start and they end in the upward position. So as x gets infinitely small, y gets infinitely big. And as x gets infinitely large, y does too. Flip it over, now you have a negative coefficient and they go the other way. So this is important to understand graphing behavior on the end so that I can help myself when it comes to finding the zeros, which is what we're going to be doing. And that's what synthetic division can help us do. Does that sound exciting? Yeah, I thank you for your enthusiasm. Yes, it does sound exciting. That's about as exciting as watching the paint dry. That is exciting. Any questions? Of course not. 